Hi everybody, this is Mr. Zarzak, and in this screencast, I'm gonna take you through derivations for equations for RC circuits. So let's get started. This is kind of the basic RC circuit. All right, so we have uh, that little epsilon, that's your that's your EMF, or that's your voltage source. Okay, and then I have a C for capacitor and R for resistor. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect over here so that I can charge the capacitor. All right, so kind of what's going on here is, is you have the like, positive terminal and the negative terminal. Okay, so as the capacitor charges up, we're gonna get like a positive side and a negative side accordingly, okay? So if I apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, all right, so I'm gonna make my little loop and say we're gonna go around this way. Okay, this extra little lead that you see here hanging out that's going vertically right now, we'll deal with that in a minute. That's right now that's not in the circuit. Okay, so some of the voltage rises and drops has got to add up to zero. All right, so I get that voltage. All right, minus whatever voltage goes across the capacitor. We'll deal with that in a minute. All right, the current's going to flow out of this. Okay, so it's going to go in a single loop. So then we just have minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which we write as IR from Ohm's law. All right, so pretty simple. There. Again, this would be for like charging the capacitor. Now, that voltage across the capacitor, if I, if I write the definition for capacitance so it's a charge over the change in the voltage okay so technically there's a there's a change in voltage that occurs across the capacitor so there's like a voltage drop so there's a little delta v okay but that's implied when we're writing these equations okay so point is is that this this c is is our q over our little oops, our little vc here all right, so I can just take and I can rearrange that and say, all right, well, then the voltage drop across the capacitor is just equal to the Q over C. All right, so then if I take my little KVL equation, all right, I'm just going to sub out where VC was and put in this little Q over C here. Okay, and this would be the equation that would describe charging the capacitor. So here, let me label that as such because we're going to make a little switch here in just a second. So this would be for charging a capacitor. All right, now we're actually gonna look at what happens when we discharge the capacitor first. So what I mean by that, okay, is the reason I have this circuit set up the way that I do is let's say that we charge up the capacitor to some value, right, we'll deal with later. All right, and then we're gonna take our switch, okay, and we're gonna flip it so that it goes over here. All right, I'm just changing colors just so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right, well, look at the capacitor. It's got positive on one side and negative on the other. So what's going to happen is, is when we discharge the capacitor, the current's actually going to flow in the other direction. So it's going to go like this, and it's going to discharge through the resistor. Okay, so now if I take this equation that I've got written for charging a capacitor, all right, and I change it for discharging. Okay, well, all we're really doing is, is we take out that voltage source. Okay, so the EMF goes away, and we're left with, when we discharge a capacitor, look at this. So this would be discharging a capacitor. So then we get zero is equal to negative Q over C minus IR. Okay, so that just says that the, the voltage drop is, um, is going to cause current in the other direction. All right, we'll get into the conceptual end. All right, later on, we just want to deal more with the math because here's where we get to play around. All right, I'm going to move that negative Q over C to the other side and make it positive. So we get Q over C is equal to negative I times R. All right, I'm going to divide both sides by a negative R. So in other words, I'm just going to move this. So negative Q over RC is equal to I. And that's what I want to focus on because the definition of current is just equal to dQ over dt. So it's the change in the charge with respect to time tells us what the current is. Okay, and that's equal to negative Q over RC. This relationship is so important. They actually put this on the AP equation sheet, which I have somewhere over here. So here's the AP equation sheet. And if I zoom in, oh, look, I is equal to dQ over dt. So if they're putting it on the equation sheet, it's pretty fundamental. It's pretty important. All right, well, anyway, so going back to this, all right, so then what can we do with this? Well, I've got Qs and dQs, so I'm going to put those together, and I'm also going to put the dt, uh, I'm going to move that over to the side of the equation too. So like if I multiply like both sides by dt, like that, okay, and then I'm actually going to take and I'm going to divide out a 1 over Q on both sides, okay, so that's pretty pretty nasty here so let me let me clean that up a bit so i get what do i have on the left here? i've got negative 
1 over RC times DT, okay, is equal to 1 over Q DQ. Okay, so I've just grouped the, the Q and the DQs together. And look, it's set up to be an integral now. All right, so now we're going to take and we're going to integrate this. Okay, so now what are my limits of integration? Okay, so then for time, so we're just going to flip the switch. So it, that's our time zero. So what we're looking for is a function that describes the charge on the capacitor at any given time, T. And this was for discharging the capacitor. So since we're discharging here, I'll put a little note over here. So for, since we're discharging, that just means that Initially, we've got, at time is equal to zero, we've got some initial charge, okay? Like, I'm not even sure what the value of that charge is. It doesn't matter, okay? This is just conceptual to set up the equation. So there's initially some charge on this thing. All right, and as time goes on, as we discharge it, all right, what's going to happen to the charge on the plate? Now, you might guess as we approach, like, time infinity, okay, that the, the total charge is all going to dissipate, but we want a function that describes any time. So we're just going to set our upper limit here to Q. So from our initial charge to some value Q, so those are our limits of integration, all right? Now let's actually do the integral. All right, on the left-hand side, negative 1 over RC, those are all constants, all right? So really, we just wind up with the integral of dt, which is t. All right, and then we put in the negative 1 over RC. We go from 0 to t. Okay, and then we've got the integral of 1 over Q, which is the good old natural log of q, which we're going to evaluate from this initial charge to some charge like that. Okay, so left-hand side is pretty simple. All right, so if I have negative t over rc, so I've subbed in t, and if I sub in 0, I've got negative 0, which is still just 0 over rc, which is still just 0. Okay, so that's it for the left-hand side. All right, the right-hand side, I get ln of q minus ln of initial q. All right, and I'm going to take and do another line here. We've used this trick before. <clears throat> All right, it's so one of those natural log identities. What is it? It's Q over Q initial. All right, like that. Okay, and now for the new trick. All right, to get that natural log operator out of there, okay, we can use the identity that if we take like E, let me, let me do this in black off to the side. So we take E to the ln of X. Okay, so then like if I raised ln of x to the power of e, well, then I just get back x, all right? And that's kind of one of my, one of the tricks that comes up here a lot, all right, with these little exponentials and natural logs. So if I did this operator, uh, well, on the left-hand side, I would still just have e to the negative t over rc, but then on the right-hand side, I get rid of that little natural log thing, and I'm left with the ratio of q over qi. Okay, and I'm getting closer here, all right, so then I'm just going to take and multiply both sides, by QI, all right, so goodbye, goodbye. All right, I'm left with initial charge times E to the negative T over RC is equal to Q. All right, and what, we're, what I'm really looking at here is, is I'm looking now at a function that tells me that the charge, how that charge varies with respect to time. So you often you'll see this as written as the charge function with respect to time, oops, sorry, is equal to QI times E to the negative t over r c. All right, and this right here is the equation that describes discharging a capacitor. All right, pretty neat. All right, now what about the what about the charging part? See, so let's back up here a little bit because we want to have a complete description of both charging and discharging. So if I go way back up to this, all right, so this was the equation for charging a capacitor. So let me bring that down. Okay, so here we'll go on a new page. So back to charging a capacitor, and that's for the case where let me let me flip the switch back. So here let me get a copy of this. Okay, so let's go back to that initial condition we were talking about where we had the switch like this. So now we're going to take and we're going to charge up the capacitor. All right, so we're starting fresh. Okay, like this. All right, so that so again, this this is just this equation that I've got written over here is just the Kirchhoff, from Kirchhoff's voltage law. All right, well, now what's going to happen, okay, is yet again, so capacitance is equal to charge over voltage. That's where we got this little 
Q over C thing is just the voltage drop across the capacitor. Okay, just a Q over C. All right, so that's where it came from. Um, but I'm gonna do a little math trick with my charging capacitor equation here, and I'm just gonna introduce a C over C. So it's like I'm multiplying by two over two or one over one, or in this case, C over C. Okay, I'm gonna do that to simplify. All right, so I don't really need this anymore right now. Okay, so then what do I have here? Is I have zero is equal to epsilon, which is my EMF, times C minus Q over C. So see like these terms here, they have common denominator. All right, minus IR, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this EC minus Q over C term, and I move it over to the left. All right, so here, come here. So I'm gonna subtract it over. Don't forget your little minus sign is equal to negative IR. Okay, and I get negatives on both sides of the equation. Okay, so that cancels. I, I could have moved the I over to the left, but I'm trying to stay consistent. If you back up to the derivation that I did for the discharging, okay, I kind of set it up this way where I had the I on the right. So that's really what I'm just trying to do here is keep it consistent. Okay, so then I can take and divide out the R on the both sides, so I get RC is equal to I. All right, so like that, and then I get that I is equal to dQ dt. Okay, so again, all right, that's the place where I can get some calculus in there. All right, so a little bit of rearrangement I'm gonna do here, and I think I'm gonna do this on a separate line just so you can see, all right, what I'm doing. So let's move over the Let's move over the DQ here to this side, like that. Okay, and let's see what else we're going to do here. Let's take, I want to leave the RC over there. So I'm going to take and multiply both sides by 1 over epsilon C minus Q. Okay, and if I do it on one side, I'm going to do it on the other side. Okay, and that's pretty messy right now, so we're going to clean that up a bit and do a little bit of rearrangement so we can get rid of that. That's kind of what's important. Okay, and so I'm left with, let's see, so I've got 1 over RC on this side times DT is equal to 1 over epsilon C minus Q DQ on the other side. Okay, so now I've got this differential set up here. All right, so again... We're gonna take and do the time side from when we start to charge this thing up to some time. All right, now when we do my when we do the limits on the other side, okay, this is for charging. So again, we're we're charging capacitor, which means that my initial charge is just equal to zero. Like I'm not starting with any charge on this thing, okay, because I'm literally going to charge it up. So I'm starting at zero charge and going to some charge Q. So my limits are slightly different. All right. So left-hand side, all right, so that one of RC is still just constant. So integral of dt is just t times RC from 0 to t. All right, now on the right-hand side, okay, it's still it's still a function where, look, like that's my q. All right, that's, that's my variable down here. All right, so it's in the denominator. So this is going to wind up being a natural log function, function. So I get ln of epsilon c minus q. Okay, but we're going to wind up with uh, with a minus sign out in the front. So, like, think if we took the derivative of this, it would be 1 over EC minus Q, but then we'd have to take the derivative of the inside. So it would be the derivative of EC minus Q, which would just be negative 1. So it would be 0 for the EC and negative 1 for the Q because that minus sign is already in there. All right. So we go from 0 to Q. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and just so that we have kind of the same approach that we did in the discharging is, you know what, I can move that negative over there and does not change my equation at all. All right, so left-hand side, negative T over RC from zero to T is just negative T over RC. Okay, and then this is gonna be ln of epsilon C minus Q for Q minus ln of epsilon C minus zero, so it's just epsilon C. All right, and so then negative T over RC is equal to ln of EC minus Q over epsilon C, all right, like that. Okay, so again, a little bit messier, 
but similar format where I can take and I can raise all of this to the power of e to eliminate that natural log, and I get this e to the negative t over rc. See, look how that shows up again, is equal to epsilon c minus q over epsilon c. All right, getting closer. So then let's move the denominator, that epsilon c, over. So then we get epsilon c times e to the negative t over rc is equal to this. All right, and then let's go ahead and flip-flop the left and the right. So let's move the q over to the left-hand side. Okay, and then we'll leave the epsilon c, and we're just subtracting over the epsilon c e to the negative t over r c. All right, and then because we have this epsilon c here for both, I'm just going to factor it out. Okay, and because what we're looking at now is, is we're looking at a charge function that varies with respect to time. So q of t instead of q, and again, either way, it really doesn't matter. It's just that's you'll see it written like that. So then we have epsilon. So the the EMF times, I'm going to make that epsilon a little nicer. That made it worse. Should have just left it alone. Epsilon C times quantity 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. All right, and this would be for charging the capacitor. So sorry. Charging a capacitor. Ta-da. All right, so now I have one equation for charging and one equation for discharging. Let's put them side by side and compare. All right, so backing up. Da -da. Aren't those nice? Okay, so kind of similar fashions. All right, if we can, uh, another time we'll have to look at these graphically. Okay, but we have one for how we put the charge on and then one for how we take the charge off. All right, now you might be feeling a little bit lost here, but wait, there's more. Okay, and we're going to try to put some, make some sense to this, I think. All right, we'll check this out. Okay, so current is defined as the change in charge with respect to time. So that's just the time derivative of the charge. Well, what if we had a function for the charge that varied with time? Could we not take the time derivative and get back to the current? And the answer is, is yes, we can, because we do have a charge function that varies with respect to time for both charging and discharging. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so then we get d dt. Yeah, this is a mathy one, huh, guys? And gals and friends. All right, so many brackets. Okay, so if we took the time derivative of this, all right, what's going to happen? I think it's actually easier to see what happens if we distribute the EC back through this. So if nothing else, we can get rid of some brackets. Okay, so then we get this epsilon C minus epsilon C E to the negative T over RC. So that's what we're going to take the time derivative of. Okay, so if we were to do that, well, EC are just constants. All right, so it's just some constant. So there's nothing there. We'll take the derivative of a constant at zero. Okay, so then we get negative epsilon C. All right, and then the derivative of the e function is the e function, but we have to worry about the exponent. So then the derivative of the exponent of negative t over rc would be negative 1 over rc, okay, times e to the negative t over rc. All right, and this cleans up a little bit here. Look at this. So I got a negative and a negative makes a positive. Okay, and I can factor out a c and a c. All right, and so then we get to this. So then what's left here? So we have epsilon, which is the EMF, over the resistance times e to the negative t over rc. All right, now believe it or not, this should actually look a little bit familiar, okay, and if you're not seeing it yet, the pattern that's in here is as well this epsilon, that's just, that's just your EMF, that's your voltage source, okay? So let me just write this as v, okay? And then just to kind of make the distinction here, this is really the part that I'm talking about. Look, it's current is equal to voltage over resistance. That's Ohm's law. Okay, so when we add in capacitors, we still have Ohm's law. So here, look, it's still Ohm's law. Okay, it's just Ohm's law modified with a capacitor. Wow. 
that's kind of neat. All right, now this was for charging. All right, this is for charging a capacitor. I wonder what would happen if we applied the same approach to discharging a capacitor. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? All right, so let's do exactly that because we happen to have our equation for discharging the capacitor right over here. All right. Now, that this discharging has that initial QI, the initial charge, whereas this one is written in terms of voltage and capacitance. So just, again, for consistency, and so that ultimately, so we get Ohm's law out of this when we're done. All right, so then capacitance is equal to charge over voltage. Okay, so then that's so like our initial charge of the voltage across the capacitor, all right, which is really just the initial charge over that EMF. All right, so then... The EMF times the capacitance is equal to that QI. All right, so I'm just going to take this and sub it in. Okay, so we're just moving back and forth with all this. All right, so then if I take this and I'm going to sub out that QI and sub in this epsilon times capacitance, and clean that up just a little bit with stray marks. There we go. Okay, now same approach as we did for charging the capacitor is, hey, current is the time derivative of our charge with respect to time. All right, so then same trick. Time derivative of our capacitor function, Q of T, which is this thing right here. Almost done. Okay, so this derivative is actually a little bit easier, sort of. All right, so we have epsilon times capacitance. All right, so then, again, the derivative of the E function is E function, but we have to worry about the exponent, so then we'd have a negative 1 over RC if we took the derivative of negative T over RC. Okay, and then we have E to negative T over RC. All right, and let's see, so we can cancel out a C like we did before, but in this case, we cannot cancel out the negative sign. All right, so then what are we left with? We've got negative epsilon over r e to the negative t over rc. Okay, and if I take this, let me just replace that little epsilon for emf with v for voltage to, to make it more familiar. All right, and so what do we have? We have, let me make a little space. All right, we've got Ohm's law. For a capacitor. Did I write with or for? Yeah, with a capacitor. Lowercase r. Okay, I don't know why. And this would be for discharging a capacitor. All right, and if I look at these two side by side, Okay, look, it's the same equation with the one exception of that little negative sign, which means that when we charge up a capacitor, the current flows in one direction. When we discharge the capacitor, the current flows in the other direction. That's it. All right, pretty cool. So now we have equations that relate only the law with charging and discharging a capacitor. Okay, and then we also have equations that describe the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. All right, pretty exciting. Lots of math, but... Hey, we've got the math, so then later on we can dig into the concepts and the why. All right, so this is Mr. Zodek saying thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.